why does it always seem that post our firm these days we seem to be sitting here with a sense of perspective a sense of you know what does the future hold for the club what does the future hold for rangers it seems like it's a common occurrence over the last couple of seasons and are we in danger of losing some perspective are we in danger of perhaps losing our heads a little bit after this latest setback yes Yesterday's performance was woeful. Yes, yesterday's performance was passionless, heartless and clueless and gutless and spineless and any other word ending in less that you want to add to it. Yes, John Lundstrom was absolute disgusting and absolute disgrace and should never play for the club again. All agreed. But in terms of what does the future hold for our club, that's the great question that seems to be sort of been discussed at this point in time. And I think, you know, in terms of what does the future hold, we need to look at a few elements of Rangers. Number one, the manager. Where do we go next? What does the future hold for Philippe Clement over the next three games, over the summer and into next season? Also, what does the future hold for the playing squad as well in terms of the Rangers squad as it presents itself at this moment in time? And what are realistic expectations for this playing squad in terms of, you know, clearing them out, in terms of renewing the squad. I think that's all, you know, reasonable discussions. And I think we've got to kind of, with calm heads now on, on Sunday, the 12th of uh, May, sit here and kind of unpack it a little bit and unpick it a little bit. Because I think yesterday everyone was raging, everyone was angry, and quite rightly so. You know, it's a game... The old firm game, and it is the old firm game, despite what they say across the city, despite the fact that they continue to call it the Glasgow Derby. Uh, absolute disgrace. We know that that's all just a little bit of a poke at us rather than, a you know, an actual genuine feeling from them. But hey, who cares what Celtic think? All right, let's deal with some realities. You know, the league is over. We were in a position to win the league. We had a genuine belief that we could win the league this season after... Being seven points behind after being in, a, in an impossible position after the sacking of Michael Beale, quite rightly so. We came back, we stood, you know, in a position where had we won those two games against Dundee and Ross County, we would be top of the league. And um, perhaps today wouldn't have been a concern. But you know what? It is, it is what it is. We are where we are now, and we are six points behind. There are two games remaining. Effectively, the league is done and dusted. They are not going to lose two games and we are not going to win two games and turn the goal difference around. That's just not going to happen. Well, I think we'll win two games, but I don't think they will lose two games. So let's talk first of all about Philippe Clement. Now, there was some calls on a number of podcasts yesterday, including my own and on the rabble as well. I was, I was listening to the rabble on the way home from work. Um, as regards the uh, future of Philippe Clement, there was people calling for his head. There was people calling for Clement to be sacked. Now, I think this is very much premature at this point in time. Uh, look, I'm not going to call for him to be sacked. That's not who I am. Um, I think the problem is you risk turning yourself into Watford, into Chelsea. If you continually sack managers, you know, you look at those two clubs, they are continuously in a state of flux where season after season, where month after month or so half season after half season, they seem to sack their manager and move on to the next one, leading to a, a permanent state of player turnover. Support or up, or, or up unrest and just genuine underperformance from both clubs. You know, I don't think we can go through that position where we constantly change our managers. We've got to kind of pick a horse and ride it to the finish if, if you kind of uh, get what I'm getting at with that. Now, I think we need to get a sense of perspective of where we are at this moment in time. I think to judge Philippe Clement, and this I know sounds a lot like Michael Beale from last season, but to judge Philippe Clement on what has happened so far is slightly unjust. Yes, there are questions that he needs to answer. Is the pressure non-existent? Of course it's not non-existent. And I'll get to the questions and the pressure on Clement. And I'm not saying that he is entirely without blame and he is entirely without pressure. I'm not saying that for a minute. And if you hang on, I will get to that. Now, if we get a sense of perspective of where we're at at this moment in time, when Philippe Clement took over, we were seven points behind in the league. And I think every one of us kind of admitted that the season was over. I think back in October, they were already celebrating the league. Um, everybody was thinking how hopeless it was. The team was absolutely useless and things did not look good at all. I think that's a, a fair assessment. We turned that seven point gap round at one point and were top of the league. Yes, it's now six points. So you could kind of argue what improvement is there. there. We won a cup. We won the League Cup. Um, yes, we didn't have to play Celtic, but we still won the League Cup. 
we got through to the knockout stages of the Europa League, topping our group. Um, you know, we were unlucky to lose against Benfica. Had we had a real striker, a real finisher, and not Silvio Dessas, I think we possibly could have won that game at Ibrox. So I think there is positives there. There is things to pick up. Is the team in a better position than it was in September? Yes, it is. Is the team realistically stronger in terms of the backroom staff and in terms of the, the, the front office? Yes, it is. So there are positives to take from this. Of course there are. Now, look, I'm not pretending that everything is rosy in the garden and that everything is blooming and everything is just unbelievable tickety-boo. I'm not pretending that for a moment. But what I am saying is, like I said, there is a sense of perspective there of where we were to where we are now. Now, look, yes, there is some negatives to what Clemon, and I'm not suggesting for a minute that Philly Clemon is entirely without blame for what has happened over the last few months, weeks, etc. Were we in a position to win this league? Yes, we were. Were we in a position to win a treble? Yes, we were. Were we in a position to put our foot, our foot, our foot on Celtic's throat and keep it there? Yes, we were. Were we in a position to lay down a marker? Yes, we were. Did we throw all that away? Yes, we have. Now, Clemon has got some questions to answer. The questions that he needs to answer are these. Number one, why is it when we got in a position of power, we got a position of you know authority, we then threw it away? The defeat against Motherwell, the defeat against Ross County, the underperformance against Dundee, despite what Clermont may have said post-game. And I think you've got to kind of take that with a little pinch of salt. You've got to kind of take what everything he says in terms of, I think, the squad, in terms of voices about their belief, with a pinch of salt. Because is he realistically going to come out and say, when asked about the players' hunger and belief in being able to beat Celtic, no, they haven't got any, no, they're awful, no, they're dreadful. He's not. Yes, he, he, you could say it's a lie, but all managers do that to try and boost their players. That's just who they are. So, yes, there are questions to be answered over that, over those defeats to Motherwell, Ross County. Shocking performance against Dundee. And I'll get to Celtic and those results in a moment. Is there questions to answer over team selections? Yes, there are. Is there questions to answer over substitutions and his proactive management of the game? Yes, there is. However... Is he hamstrung by injuries? Yes, he is. Is he missing some of what you would describe as first team starters? Yes, he is. Oscar Cortez, Abdallah Sima, Danilo. I mean, realistically, guys, if we thought realistically about our strongest possible team from the squad we currently have, I mean, that's obviously not thinking about any, you know, future uh, buys like Cordoba, who has been rumoured, or you know, any anybody else who is, you know, currently in that in that sort of spectrum uh, for being rumoured. You know, what is potentially our strongest team going into this stage of the season? You know, yes, there are players, you know, that's, that are missing. And yes, there are players that are potentially, you know, very uh, are starters. Now, realistically, you know, if he had been able to select, say, this team today, of Butland in goal, back four of Tav, you know, say what you want about Tav. And I'll get, and I'm going to talk about Tav shortly. Probably going to cause a load of controversy. Going to probably going to get me some abuse. Uh, a suitor, Balogun, Ridvan as a back four. Dio and Sterling, Cortez, Canwell, Sima, and Danilo. Had he been able to pick that team today, do I think that would have team would have won? Probably would have done actually. Um, you know, is he kind of hamstrung by injuries? Yes, he is. Is he kind of hamstrung by? what he has in place yes he is he is is he kind of hamstrung a little bit by how he wasn't backed fully in january yes he is is he kind of disingenuous maybe you know the fact that he says players need to earn shirts yet some players don't seem to be able to be dropped have uh, lundstrom for example but he has dropped golds and he has hooked cantwell he seems to be a i don't know a sort of mixed metaphor a mix of kind of you know, what's true, what's not true. And he really does confuse me to some degree. And he is a very difficult person to read. And I I, I just think, look, whatever position we are currently in, whatever we are currently looking at, we kind of need to wait. We kind of need to let him and Niels Coppen build a squad and then judge him. I think judging him now with what he's been left with, with Michael Beale's mess, with Michael Beale's players, with Joe Van Bronckhurst's players to some degree, with Ross Wilson's players, 
I, you know, with Stephen Gerrard's players to some degree, I don't think it's fair to judge him. I think you need to give him the summer and maybe January uh, next year to kind of judge where we're at. You know, we cannot keep going through a situation where we hire a manager, we sack him. Six months later, we're, we're, we're talking about we're sat here in the same position next season going, well, next season we need to do X, Y and Z. We need to rebuild this, rebuild that. We can't keep doing that. It is just not prob probable and possible. We need to kind of stick with one rather than twist. And I think that's where we're at now. Do I think Clermont is entirely blameless? No, I don't. I think his substitutions at times are very confusing, like bringing on Scott Wright today instead of Todd Cadwell made absolutely zero sense. Do I think that some of his team selections are utterly baffling? Yes, I do, but I do think that is down to the injury situation we're currently facing. Do I think that he will be under a whole heap of pressure should we lose the cup final? Yes, I do. If we win the cup final, I think he'll be in a better position going forward into next season with a little bit more belief there from fans in his ability to overcome that lot. Now, if we were to lose the cup final, then that would mean that he is going into a situation where next season he is in a worse position, theoretically, than Michael Beale was. I'm not saying Michael Beale is a good manager. Michael Beale was an awful manager. But what I'm saying is he will be under a whole lot of pressure. Why will he be under a whole lot of pressure? Because in all his meetings this season with Celtic, he has failed to overcome them once if he doesn't win the cup final. Rangers managers who don't beat Celtic don't tend to be in the job very long. That's just a fact, and that's just a real truth of being at Ibrox. So do I think he's going to win the cup final? Yes. Do I think it's possible? Maybe. Do I think it's going to be a hard ask, given the fact that they, they do have better players than us? Yes, I do. I think to call for his head now is too early. I think we need to give him the summer. I think we need to give him the start of next season and then make a judgment. I think the summer is absolutely critical for this club. I genuinely do. Now, look, moving on a little bit, do I think that realistically we can get rid of 12, 15 players? No, I don't. No, I just don't think that is possible. You know, realistically, the playing squad as it currently stands is not good enough. Yes, that is correct. 100% correct. Um, it, it isn't good enough. It is nowhere near good enough. You know, it is a lot worse than that lot from across the city. Uh, we do need to look at it. We do need to redevelop it. But realistically, is it, a, is it a squad you can just get rid of everybody? Now, look, in an ideal world, if, if we look at this squad, this, this is the squad as it currently sits, currently stands on the 12th of May 2024. You know, this is this is our Rangers squad. Here we go. Let me present it to you. Let me show you this squad. This is from Transfer Market, guys. Good source of information. I hope it's going to share with you in a moment. It should be coming up shortly. Uh, you know, it is a squad that does have an awful lot of gaps, holes, missing parts to it. I'm not pretending for a minute that this is a perfect squad. It isn't. It isn't a perfect squad. I think that is an absolute fact, an absolute fact. So let's have a quick look at this squad, shall we? So here we go. Let's bring it up on the screen properly for you so you can actually see it and know what my computer is currently doing. So, you know, you look at the goalkeepers. Butland, yes, absolutely outstanding. Has to stay, has to try and keep hold of him. Jack Butland is a top, top man. I don't know if you can see this, guys. I don't know where, that, where on earth has that gone? My computer is playing up at this moment and I do apologize for this very pathetic behavior so let's have a quick look shall we okay so let's just stop share I mean, let me just talk you through the squad anyway so the goalkeepers Butler McCrory McLaughlin realistically you know John McLaughlin's got to go he will go he's out of contract now look let's look at the defenders um, as they stand on the 12th of May. So the defence here, you've got Connor Goldson. Now, look, I am 100% in favour of getting rid of Connor Goldson. Do I think that Connor Goldson will be easy to ship on? No, I don't think he'll be easy to ship on. Why don't I think he'll be easy to ship on? Because at the end of the day, he's on a big salary, he's on a big wage. You know, you realistically, you're going to have a, have a situation where, you know, trying to get rid of him, trying to ship him on to another club, uh, is going to be very difficult. So realistically, 
look, let's face facts, we may still be stuck with Connor Goldson next season. Is that ideal? No, it's not. But you know, if Connor Goldson wants to still be paid forty thousand pound next next a week next year, he's not going to get that in the English Championship or in the English in you know at the lower end of the English League Premiership. I don't think that any English Premiership club is going to take a chance on him for one minute. But I do think you know the Championship possibly is a realistic level for Connor Goldson. You know, continuing through this squad as it's as it stands at this moment in time. You know, James Tavernier, you know, realistically, Tav needs to move on. Of course he does. But are we going to realistically get rid of the, the, the club captain? I honestly don't think so. I honestly think Tav will be here next season. If he is, I think it's a whole host of problems. Of course I do. But realistically, is he going to still be here next year unless we get a stupid money bid from the Saudis? Yeah, probably. Yilmaz will stay. Lundstrom, obviously, we know he's going to go at the end of the season. John Suter will be here, I think, next season as well. Is he good enough to be a starter? Probably not. Is he good enough to be a backup? Yes, he probably is. Fabio Silva, we know, will return to Wolves. Ryan Jack is our contract. Again, I don't think we should renew his contract. So that's another one gone. Cyril Dessas, I think, will still be here next season, no matter what you think of Dessas. Personally, don't like him. Personally, don't trust him think he's a backup striker at the very best do we need strikers yes we do do we need a couple of strikers yes we do tom lawrence i think it's time he went he was moved on if we can but again it's finding buyers for these players that is the issue we have so lawrence needs to go i do agree he's one paced time for him to move on Cantwell stays for me cortez stays for me matondo again someone i think does need to move on matondo if we can't move him on is a squad player an impact sub does he, is, does he fulfill that role well enough? Probably. So, you know, it's not a massive disaster if he stays. Abdallah Seema, I do think we need to try and come to some sort of agreement with Brighton and secure him on a permanent basis. Kieran Dowell, I do think needs to go. I think he's too injury prone. I think he gets, he really does, you know, need to move on. But realistically, is that a possibility? You know, do we, can we find a buyer for him? Again, it comes down to that. Sterling for me stays probably the best player Probably the best right back, left back, centre defensive midfielder, right winger that we've got, centre back that we've got. The one worry I've got over Sterling is where can we find his best position? What is his best position and will he be played in that position? Something that Philippe Clement needs to answer. Scott Wright, time for him to go. But again, can we find a buyer? We tried last summer to ship him out to Antalya Spore in Turkey. He decided to turn it down. Can we find a buyer for him? That is the worry. Kimar Roof obviously is out of contract, so he's gone. Ben Davis, again, on big wages. Can we find a buyer for him? Didn't look too bad today against Celtic, actually, to be honest with you. Balogun, do we offer him a year's contract? I think we do. Keep him as a backup, keep him as a squad player. I think he's a decent option. Robbie McCrory, again, I would keep. Barisic, gone. The sooner he's gone, the better. Kieran Wright, again, I think he's another one, possibly a squad player. McLaughlin, I've said, is gone. King, I think, needs to stay. Diamande stays quality player. I think we can build a team around Dio. Raskin, I think Raskin is a player that we can get the best out of. I don't understand why Clement doesn't like him. I don't understand why Clement isn't using him. I think we looked a whole lot better today when he came on in place of John Lundstrom. More mobile, we got forward better, got in and about Celtics midfield better. He is 10 times the player John Lundstrom is. Why are we not using him? Why are we favouring a player like Lundstrom, who is an absolute waste of time? McCausen stays. Alex Lowry, I think, has to stay next season. We see what we've got. And Danio, another one. We haven't, we, I think it's too early to make an assessment of him. He is missing, you know, he has missed a lot of football. Now, look, ideally, there's a lot of players you want to get rid of there. But number one, can you find a buyer for them? Number two, do we have the funds to replace them all? Key questions there. What are the priorities going forward for Rangers? Number one, I think we need to build from the back. We need a defence. Tav has got to go. And I know there's a lot of Tav fans out there, but defensively, he is fucking appalling. Dyson Maida absolutely had him in his back pocket today. Absolutely owned him today. He gave the ball away for the start of the first goal. He was shocking today. He cannot defend. Yes, his numbers going forward are good. Yes, he scores penalties. Wow. I think you can probably find a striker to do that. Yes, he scores at the odd, the odd free kick. But overall... I think he's replaceable. We need two centre-halves, 100% two starting centre-halves. Jose Cordoba is possibly one. We need to go and get another one, I think. Left back is Ridvan Yilmaz. We need a couple of strikers. Absolutely dire need of strikers. We need a winger. 
I think there are those needs we need to address. Do we have the money for it? Big question for this board. I do worry that this board have the ambition to back the manager back up and, and take us to the next level. Do I trust John Bennett? Hell no. Of course I don't trust John Bennett. Look, we are in a position now where we stand at the precipice where we could either turn back, start to go up the hill towards a building, a new future, a successful future for the club, or we step over the precipice and we fall to disaster and we stay second to that lot for the foreseeable future. Look, options for future. Number one, we've got to give Clemon a summer, Clemon and Coppin a summer to build a squad. I think he'll change the pre-season training methods to get the fitness better, to get to limit the injuries. I think he'll bring in some good players. If you look at Cortez and Diamande, the players they brought in, yes, Silva perhaps hasn't been as successful, but Diamande and Cortez are good players. So you've got to back Coppin and Clemon from that aspect. And we do need to be brave this summer. We do need to perhaps take off the sticking plaster of certain players like Goldson, like Tavernier, and try to move them on to try and look for a way to build for the future. If we don't, then who knows what happens? Do we then become the Borussia Dortmund of Scotland to Celtics Bayern Munich? Who knows, guys? Who knows? But we are in a very delicate position. And as someone who loves this club, as someone who bleeds red, white and blue, we need to be in a position to compete, guys. We need to get back to Walter Smith days, to the Graham Sooners days, to the Dick Advocat days, to the Big Egg days. We need to get back to those successful times, not live in a, in a squalor of second place in the city of Glasgow and in the nation of Scotland. Guys, let me know what you think of what we discussed this morning, this afternoon, or this evening, depends obviously when you've picked up the video. What do you think the future holds? What do we need to do to step on? And what do we need to do to stop having this conversation season after bloody season? Thank you for watching Glasgow Rangers Nation, guys. Please smash that sub. Help the channel to keep on growing. Thank you for watching this channel, guys. As always, two things I ask of you on the way out. Number one, smash the like. And number two, remember always, we are the people.